Hey everyone, my name is Alex and I'm here with a build guide. Uh, this is going to be a Mjolnir Inquisitor starter for 319. Um, I uh, just decided to make this build and I had the inspiration to go ahead and make a video about it. Um, if you don't care about me introducing myself and all that kind of stuff, then you can go ahead and skip in the timestamp on the progress bar and you can get straight to the build. Um, anyway, uh, my name's Alex, and uh, I've been doing a bit of streaming with EVE Online, but I've taken a break. Uh, I haven't done a lot with YouTube in many, many years, and I haven't streamed much PoE. And I had the inspiration this league to go ahead and give that a shot. So uh, if you want to check me out on Twitch, I should start streaming about an hour before league launch on the 19th. Um, so hopefully about when Q comes up. And I'm going to be streaming over on Twitch.tv. Alex slash alexander underscore core engine the link for that will be down in the description if you want to check that out i'll be there to be able to answer any questions you guys may have about this build or anything in general and um if you want any assistance with putting it together or anything i, I enjoy working on builds and helping people out um as far as that my uh my plans for youtube here are going to be have this video as the initial video for the build guide and its role as a starter and then I'm going to make a second video when the patch notes come out and after POB has updated uh, so that I can address any changes that have happened uh, to the build because of any unique changes because they said they're buffing 100 uniques. Maybe they hit something that I'm using um, and anything else like that. And then I'm going to make a third video a couple weeks into the league probably. Uh, when I have been playing the build, I've got it into the end game, and I can discuss a bit more how I'm going to actually scale it into the end game because this guy does not address that too much. And um, yeah, so I look forward to you know doing all this YouTube and Twitch stuff, and I hope that you guys can come along with me. All right, getting started here with the build demonstration. I'm going to be running a map for you guys just to kind of show off what we're doing here. Um, let's go ahead and do, uh, let's do a Barrows map. How about that? Let's get this scoured, chiseled, and out. Uh, I'm just going to do a demonstration here using a build I slapped together. That should be okay. Build I slapped together at the end here of 318 just for demonstration purposes. And I'm going to show off the gear once we're uh, once we're done with this. But just as a forewarning, this is extremely cheap and level 77. This build is by no means a finalized in-game build, which is why I'm not showing you some kind of big boss or something. Uh, I just want to give you a taste for how the gameplay looks. This is not an indication of its power level. I want to get that out of the way in case you know I go die in here. So, you know, typical cyclone triggering build running mana bond and uh shock nova and arc in the cast on crit as you can see the clear is reasonably smooth we have good enough damage that the clear feels all right and like i said we're level 77 this is a t15 map with some juice on it this is a full atlas tree and all that stuff this is the end of the league as you can see i'm still leveling gyms half of them are like level 12. And still things are going pretty good. This is probably about the uh, level you should be looking at in like high yellow maps. And um, probably around the gear of that too. And then here we are in red maps. And high red maps. Capable of clearing the map. And so, uh, yeah. I just wanted to give a quick little indication of what the playstyle is going to look like. You know, this gear is bad, but... Even as you get better gear, it's pretty much going to look the same. It's going to be the same style of gameplay, just with a bit more move speed and a bit more damage so that stuff falls over even faster. Also, quite a bit tankier. Right now we only have about 2300 mana. A proper version of this build would have significantly more than that. Alright, we're going to move on here to our path of building. Uh, I'm going to do a quick overview of the build, and then we'll go into the specifics in order of gems, tree, and then gear, and then leveling. Got some good leveling trees and uh, skill setups here for you. So, as far as the general build, this is going to be Mjolnir, it's going to be Inquisitor, it's going to be mana stacking, and it's going to be a bit of stat stacking too. Uh, those are our primary uh, build archetypes. So, Inquisitor, right? We're running the Sanctuary Pious Path combo, we're doing the Consecrated Ground stuff. We get a bunch of Life Regen, Energy Shield Regen, 
uh, extra damage to enemies, and they linger. It's good stuff. The other half, we're doing the Righteous Providence and Inevitable Judgment combo as well. Inevitable Judgment is a whole bunch of damage, literally double against bosses, if we have 100% crit chance, which we do. And then Righteous Providence is how we're getting that 100% crit chance, because of the stat scaling with strength and intelligence. And there's going to be a lot of pieces to this and how we're getting it to work. This also helps us fit Mjolnir even easier. So, the, the other half of it, Mjolnir. A lot of strength, a lot of int requirement, that's kind of what the stacking is helping to alleviate, and is triggering lightning spells. So we have three damage setups, Mjolnir number one, Mjolnir number two, and a cast on crit or cast while channeling while you're uh, low gear state uh, in the chest. So we have three damage setups because of running these Mjolnirs with that trigger socketed lightning spell on hit. Um, also, stat stacking. Like I said, we're running Astra Menace Cyclopean Coil. These are, uh, Cyclopean Coil is cheap, Astra Menace is not too expensive. Uh, according to POE Antiquary, Astra Menace was somewhere in the 20 to 30 C range in like day two, day three. Um, that is pricey, but definitely doable, and I expect to be able to get it within the first couple days. Uh, we're also doing stat stacking, taking utmost intellect, and also utmost might. And we're going to be getting that 5% increased attributes and damage per lowest attribute, which we also get damage per lowest attribute on the Cyclopean Coil, as well as Iron Will. So we're doing a lot of stuff with the stat stacking. Not to mention the fact that Strength gives us lots of life, and then damage with Iron Will. Intelligence gives us extra mana, and even a little bit of Energy Shield, both of which are important to the build, because the last archetype is mana stacking. Uh, here you see we have 4700 mana. That's not a lot for a mana stacker. Like I said, this is a very rudimentary build. We should not have this wheel right here. That is a mistake. It's corrected now. Um, so this mana is pretty much just from some very basic mana gear and whatever mana we manage to grab on the tree. Because mana is not scaling our tank in the same way as an ES version does with all the clusters and that kind of thing, we're also not a higher font. So mana becomes more of just a damage tool. And so it's not something we can go quite as hard into. So we only have about 5k, but it still makes it worth it because of the buffed Mind Over Matter that we're getting next league. This is going to 40% without needing a unique chest. It's very nice. Uh, and so yeah, that pretty much covers the whole build and how it works. Um, as far as pros and cons of this build, um, I guess I'll start with pros. Pros, it looks like it's going to be able to operate pretty damn well on a fairly tight budget. We're talking less than... Less than 100C being able to do high tier red maps and early bossing very effectively. Um, it's going to be a fairly decent clear build. It's going to have a moderate amount of tank. Um, and I think it's a pretty fun playstyle. As far as cons, it's not super tanky. It's definitely not your melding, um, Aegis, you know, max block, spell suppression. You know, we're missing spell suppression. That's a pretty big con. We don't have spell suppression. It's getting nerfed this league, and I also just felt it wouldn't fit in the gear. Um, and also, it uh, the um, the damage is good, but it becomes harder to scale as you continue. Um, you're gonna start to have issues uh, in the later deal. Oh, my cat has decided that he wants to join the video. <laughs> I think you're going to get a bit of a surprise with the, the kitty. Um, hi. All right. And um, so that pretty much covers the build overview. And uh, next we're going to move on to our skill gems. Uh, before we move on to skill gems, I just wanted to talk about the Pantheon and Bandits. You're going to kill all Bandits. And then your Pantheon is going to be Freeze Immunity and Reduce Chill Effect um, with Sogoth. And then your Minor Pantheon is going to be involving usually uh, handling Chaos Dots. Uh, you could also use it to handle Corrupting Blood or other effects as you see fit. So I did mention there was a cat. There he is. His name is Jax and he may very well be disturbing me during my video making and streaming. But in the meantime... We're going to be moving on to skill gems. All right, so 
this is for the you know level 94 i'm going to cover leveling and gear transitions later in, in the guide this is just looking at what you're going to be looking to get to eventually so we're going to have an interesting aura setup we're running eternal blessing determination uh eternal blessing is actually getting buffed next with a bit of aura effect it's going to help um get us even a little bit more armor than this but we're running determination for the obvious reason it's really strong it's really strong and it's hard to get Fizz Damage Reduction otherwise in this build. But, you see this last line. Your non-blessing skills, which reserve mana, are disabled. Well, we can get more Auras if we use Arrogant Support. So, we're going to use Arrogant Support Precision. One, like Guaranteed we're using Precision until you have very good gear. And then, either Clarity or Vitality... Or both if you're feeling spicy. Um, you could reserve both and get a pretty low life total here of about 3,800. Now, bear in mind, we do have 40% mom, so it's not too bad. Um, but I felt that the vitality was not worth it. It is solid, like, 300 life regen and 300 ES regen, bear in mind. This is definitely something I may end up going with. In the meantime, though, I'm feeling uh, probably not going to run it. Um, also, you'd have to drop another... Uh, ability or maybe use an unset ring to be able to actually fit vitality into the build um okay so that's auras uh damage setups i mentioned this earlier we have three damage setups first one is our mana bond mjolnir this is half of our damage scaling from mana we get base lightning damage equal to 44 percent of missing unreserved mana this is just a very strong skill we're in crit strikes because 100 percent crit chance means that we get the uh inquisitor Ignore resist more often, and then crit damage because this builds a little bit low on crit multi, at least at these low gear levels. At higher gear levels, you're going to start to fill out that crit multi quite a bit with all the jewels and, and that sort of thing. Our second Mjolnir has a choice. You can kind of do whatever you want with the Mjolnir and the cast uh, on crit. The cat's fur is tickling my nose. Um, you can go uh, here with Arc or Shock Nova or any other lightning skill that you really want to use. Um, you know, anything you want to use lightning skill-wise. You could even use Wave of Conviction if you wanted to not bother with the conversion there. It's probably pretty good damage, though you wouldn't get the exposure out of it because we're ignoring resistances. Uh, in this case, I'm between Arc and Shock Nova. You're going to run Shock Nova Concentrated Effect for single target. You can get the overlap of the ring and the AoE, and that'll get you double damage. Or you can run Arc, because Mjolnirs are each giving us skills chain plus one time. So the, both the clear and single target of Arc is scaled quite a bit by that. And so it ends up being a pretty good option on that front as far as clear. Uh, you saw in my demonstration I went with Shock Nova. But I think Arc may be the better choice in general, assuming you're okay with your single target. Then we're going to have a cast on crit setup. So uh, this is just the 5 link version. So we're going to have Cyclone, Arc... And I recommend using Arc here. Um, well, I suppose you could use anything you wanted. Um, Arc just scales very nicely with those plus two chain from the two Mjolnir. And then you're going to have Crit Strikes, Cast on Crit, and then probably Inspiration. This is going to help with your mana cost, and it also fills out your crit chance even just a little bit more. So this is a pretty good one. However, uh, something I want to mention. This... Inspiration does not work if you manage to get the mana cost of Arc and and Cyclone, both of these. If you get both of them to zero, to where it does not cost any mana, Inspiration will not work. So I just want to get that across because you know you may essentially be unwillingly running one less damage link in your setup. So if you ever notice that Inspiration charges aren't working, it's because you actually have too much reduced mana cost. Um, in that case, you could simply drop Inspiration for another support. All right, so a bit of support links. We just got mark on hit assassin mark. This just helps with the crit cap, cap. It's just a good ability. We're going to be running this. Then we're going to be running Ice Golem. Accuracy rating is an important stat in this build. Crit chance, always good. Vol RF is just a bit of a damage button. It's just nice to have. We're only using the Vol side. I know we're an Inquisitor, but we really haven't scaled regen hard enough to do regular Righteous Fire. Our other damage button, Arcane Cloak. This is a big one. We can use Arcane Cloak and get a nice little defensive boost, though not much of one, but a huge offensive boost with a lot of at flat added lightning damage. That does not affect Mana Bond very much because it already gets a lot of flat lightning damage, but Arc and Shock Nova 
get a massive buff from this arcane cloak even with only around 5k mana and then you can just slap arcane surge on this at level 20 and get yourself a nice 20 percent more spell damage but it's actually 30 percent because we're running arcane capacitor scaling our arcane surge effect by 50 percent so we get 30 percent more spell damage here it's as strong as the vol rf and we also get a lot of mana regen so this is a very important setup to the build and then your movement skill uh, we don't have the socket to be able to do faster casting here. Um, I'm hoping that it's going to feel okay without faster casting. Um, but that pretty much covers our gym setup. Alright, moving on. We are here with our skill tree. So, as I said, we are a Templar. Um, starting out, you're going to be coming out here. You can get your attack speed and accuracy rating. This is very important. Life, mana, reduced mana cost. Very nice. Bit of damage and crit chance. Always, always good stuff. Life, life but also more reduced mana cost. This is nice to have. Life, life, as we're pathing down here to get our strength. I already mentioned this earlier. This is very important. Um, we get our arcane surge scaling here. We get a bit of life reservation efficiency here. This is getting nerfed, but it's still worth it. We also get a bit of aura effect, which is nice to have. And then more life. We path over here, get our mom, life. We path down here for mana and iron will, mana and life, you know, that's where we get everywhere, mana and life, mana and life, mana, mana, our int stacking, and then a big boost of crit multi. As I mentioned earlier, this build is pretty darn low on crit multi. This wheel right here is a huge damage bump to the build. So that is uh, something you take later. You're going to want to take it once you have high crit chance, but once you have high crit chance, this wheel is very strong. Um, but yeah, the build's pretty simple, or the tree is pretty simple. It's basically... Um, Life, mana, get the stat wheels, and jewels. Uh, that's pretty much it. Alright, moving on, we've got our gear. As I've already mentioned before, we've got our Mjolnir, Astra Minus, Cyclopean Coil, but I can cover the rest of it here. So, Death Rush is just a nice utility ring. It gives a solid amount of Chaos Res, bit of life, bit of armor, actually, a good amount of accuracy rating, which is something that's very important to this build, and then Onslaught on Kill. Onslaught just really helps the DPS and the clear speed, it's a nice thing to have. Basically, everything on this ring is good to have. It's basically like having a good rare plus onslaught. So, definitely something considering if you can cap your elemental resistances without it. I definitely would prioritize capping your LE res before worrying about getting death rush with the chaos res. Otherwise, all of the rares, in this case, mostly just life or mana uh, and resistances trying to cap your res. So, helmet. We've got a bit of accuracy rating mana and some resistances that's it chest plate we got mana resistances a little bit of strength gloves oh, my cat is bumping my hand uh, gloves we've got mana attack speed strength and some resistances now the strength isn't completely necessary and it, neither is the attack speed these are damage mods that you'll get as you have the currency to fit them um, but this is definitely not something that hard to get and then our boots, we pretty much just want a bit of move speed, and then once you have the currency for it, you're going to want CDR. The CDR is very nice to have, and uh, does bump your damage quite a bit. And then finally, the ring is just going to be resistances and accuracy rating. Uh, you can also fit some attack speed on this if you've got the room. Uh, Amulet Anoint, I've gone with Mind Drinker. Getting that mana on kill is very nice to have. Alternatively, you can also do Blood Drinker and get life on kill. This may actually be the better way, but this is quite a bit more expensive than Mind Drinker. Uh, otherwise, there's also Crusader. This is a very powerful anoint once you have the currency. However, I would probably recommend simply doing Forbidden Flesh and Flame for Divine Guidance to get the Transfiguration of Mind. So your anoint would not be Crusader at that point. You'd be getting Transfiguration of Mind through this. And your anoint can be something else, such as the Life Gain on Kill or Mana Gain on Kill. Um... Otherwise, we got our flasks. So we're gonna we're looking for a granite flask, a diamond flask if you need the crit chance, you may not, and then the quicksilver flask for the movement speed. This is pretty set in stone. If you don't need the diamond flask, you could also do an onslaught flask if you're not running death rush, um, or uh, there's really any uh, choice that you want to do. Um, as far as suffixes that we're looking for, attack speed is good if you still need attack speed. I'm going to talk about the breakpoints later. Uh, crit chance is good if you still need crit chance, and then armor is good. And then move speed is good as well if you want that. You could also look at various ailment avoidances, um, curse reduced effect. There's lots of things that you could look for here. 
Uh, we're going to have a Mana Flask here. Um, these are the mods I recommend for the Mana Flask, uh, but you can definitely do whatever you want. That reduced mana cost of skills does make your life a little easier, but frankly, we have 460 mana regen. Um, the only reason I have the reduced mana cost of skills is just to facilitate more of that regen towards uh, acting as our tank as opposed to being spent on the skills. And then we're going to run a Life Flask with CB immunity and some charge gain on crit. This is kind of what I recommend, but um, then you got a lot of leeway on what you exactly want to run. Then we've got a good bit of jewels. So we're going to be running rare jewels. Priority here, you're going to want percent mana. That's pretty much like uh, always get percent mana. After that, you've got some choices. You can do percent life if you feel you want more tank. You can do attack speed if you still haven't reached your attack speed caps. You can do accuracy if you still need that. And then once you've got everything figured out and you've got some currency, you start doing crit multi. Because uh, that's going to be a huge amount of damage once you can do that. I mentioned earlier Forbidden Flame and Flesh for Divine Guidance on the Inquisitor. This is what I recommend. This is not necessary for the build to function. This is merely a big stat boost, basically. Lots of mana, more mom effect, and then a bunch of increased damage. That's what this is. This is not going to affect your gameplay very much, just a big stat boost. If you really want AoE and you want to start playing with energy shield scaling, you could also do Sanctuary of Thought. Uh, both are good options. I would probably recommend Divine Guidance. But um, once you can afford that and doesn't seem to be too expensive, you run the Forbidden Flame and Flesh for that. Alright, next we're going to be looking at leveling. So, I'm not going to be giving super in-depth guides for leveling, but I am going to give you some... Uh, of the breakpoints and conversions you're going to have to do with the build. Because you're going to have the point before you have Mjolnir, where you're just using self-casting. You're going to have Mjolnir, but you're not going to have enough mana to justify mana stacking. And then you're going to have enough mana to start converting into mana stacking. So there's three distinct phases to the build, and I'm going to kind of go over them. Uh, here is just a nice little level 25 tree. Um, you're going to take some things that we are going to drop off later. But we're basically prioritizing a lot of damage here. Lots of increased damage and cast speed. This is a fairly typical uh, Templar starter tree, but moving on to something a bit more build specific. So, this is our level 65-ish tree. This is going to be before you have Mjolnir. So, um, Mjolnir is a level 68 requirement, but we are preparing to get Mjolnir. Uh, you'll notice that this aura wheel has changed. We're actually trying to get, um, we're not using mana stacking yet. So, we're still reserving our mana like any other build would. We have kept uh, our damage here and our damage here because we're still self-casting, at least in the next few levels. Um, the reason I'm giving you this right before you do the conversion over the Milner is just as a demonstration of how the build's going to kind of develop. The key thing you need to be able to move over to Mjolnir is going to be this right here, which you should already have, but also the int stacking and the strength stacking. You need those two nodes to effectively convert over to Mjolnir. So uh, we should actually have Righteous Providence at this point surprised you didn't have that. So um, this is what your tree is going to look like. As far as your items, uh, you're not going to have Mjolnirs. Um, this is, you're just going to have basic stuff, you know, no Mjolnirs, right? Just gear slots for capping resists, basically, <laughs> and then get some stats. I, I mean, that's it. You just gear, you just gear cap for resists. That's it. Um, as far as the skills for this pre Mjolnir, we're going to have a bunch of damage setups, and these are things that you can pick and choose, you can kind of do whatever you want. If you know how to level, do what you enjoy, do what you're good at. What I recommend and what I'm going to do, I'm going to have a 4-link arc setup, I'm going to have a holy flame totem setup, I'm going to have an orb of storm setup, and I may also do a bit of storm brand. The key idea here is a bunch of things that you can slap down and they continue to do damage while you self-cast arc. Then we're going to have some aura setups, just determination, vitality, purity of elements. This helps cap your resist, ailment immunity, all that good stuff. Lightning Golem for the speed, and then flame dash faster casting to move around. It's just typical leveling setup. You can do whatever you want here. It does not matter very much. What I will say is once you unlock arc, and once you unlock mana bond, and maybe even shock nova, or whatever skill you're going to end up using, and that you're going to want level 1, buy it early and when you can, have a weapon swap, and start leveling it early that is something that i always forget and it's really annoying when you realize you're in yellow maps and you don't have a weapon swap leveling any gems that you're going to want to corrupt into level 21 so do that 
All right, so you've got your few chaos. You're going to have your Mjolnirs. Now what do you do? So we move over to post Mjolnir. Let's look at uh, let's look at the tree first. We aren't mana stacking yet, but we do have our Mjolnirs. That's what this tree this gear is going to look like. We've got our two Mjolnirs. It basically the same thing. You just use your gear slots for resist capping. Um, as far as the amulet, you're gonna need some dex and you're gonna need some strength probably uh, to fit your Mjolnir here. You can see that. So um, that is something to consider. But you've got your uh, your stat wheel, your stat wheel. We've moved down here to get Iron Will, and we're going to have the stats required to run a couple Mjolnirs. That's basically it. Uh, ignore the flasks. Um, just use whatever flasks you have. Um, but we see how we're running this reservation efficiency because we are still just reserving li uh, mana. So now we've added Precision here. I recommend leveling Precision the second you can get it because you're going to want it high level once you switch over to Mjolnir. We're in Determination, Precision, Vitality, Purity of Elements. Uh, we have just a little bit of mana left. Um, if you have to, lower the level of vitality such that you have enough mana to use your skills. So, we got two Mjolnir setups and a cast wall channeling setup. Keep in mind our accuracy is crap, our crit chance is crap, so we're going to use cast wall channeling rather than cast on crit. Um, we're running arc, arcane surge, and crit damage, and then we're running shark nova, crit damage, and concentrated effect. Now, the crit damage... This may or may not be the exact correct play. It's possible there's other supports that are going to be better for you here. Um, I may make a mistake here. Oh, nope. Looks like it's good. So, yeah. Uh, and then we're going to run our cast wall channeling setup. So, you know, just assuming a four link here, you may have a five link at this point. You could just add another support for some damage. That could be crit damage, probably. Um, we're in Cyclone Arc, cast wall channeling, and faster attacks. The reason we're running faster attacks is you want to be able to get to a good trigger rate for our Mjolnirs. As Mjolnirs each can do four times a second, so our Cyclone should be hitting upwards of eight times a second if we want the Mjolnirs kept out. Keep in mind, cast on crit without any CDR is only about six attacks per second. So that's actually your limiting factor, not Mjolnir. Keep that in mind. But while we're cast wall channeling, we can go as high as we need to up until eight. This is when we start using our Assassin Mark setup, Mark on Hit, where you switch over to Ice Golem from Lightning Golem, because we need that accuracy, we need that crit chance, and we're still running Flame Dash. So, at this point, you're entering maps, you've got your Mjolnir, this is the setup we're looking at. You may not necessarily have Uber Lab, but uh, this is what you'll be going for once you do, and this is what our tree looks like. Now, you've kept leveling, you've hit level, say, 75, 80, somewhere around there, now we get to our in-game tree and what you're doing. That's when you're going to start taking the mana nodes on the tree. That's when those start getting filled out. And you start to be able to run mana stacking. So we go and look at our skill gems. And this is the stuff that we've already covered. And that's the point at which you can convert to the full build. All right. I'm going to talk to you a bit about gearing and what you're going to be looking for with your gear. So, if you know what you're doing, and you know how cast on crit works, you know how Mjolnir works, you know how all this stuff works, then you probably don't need this. But this is just some good stuff for people who are unfamiliar with this type of build. So, before level 68, before Mjolnir, it's just typical starter stuff. If you don't know how to do starter leveling, there's going to be other guides out there for that. You could do something, you know, that, as long as it's a Templar and it's elemental, you'll probably be pretty close to what you need to do. Um going to use a lots of crafting to get your resists and you're going to prioritize sockets for your gym setups over better gear then the real stuff starts happening once you get Mjolnir around level 68 or so level 68 to 70 hopefully you're going to have your Mjolnirs they should be very cheap uh, I can show off antiquary later if I remember to um, so you're going to try to get both Mjolnirs your stat priority in descending order still resistance capping you have to get it okay it's very important next Accuracy becomes very important once you have Mjolnirs. It should be somewhere around 3,000. You're going to probably need a good few hundred under gear, assuming you're even running a high-level precision. Next, you're going to want some move speed on your boots, otherwise it's going to feel terrible. Life at that point is still pretty valuable. You're going to want to get some life on gear if you have the room for it. And then here's where we start getting into more of the optional stuff. So, attack speed starts to become good. If you're, out, if you're using... Cast while channeling, you can go up to 8 attacks per second. If you're using cast on crit, you can only go up to 6, because otherwise you'll start uh, lowering your proc crit quite a bit. 
And I would recommend, though, probably just stop at 6 up until you get your 14% CDR, even if you're still using Castle Channeling, because then when you flip to cast on crit, you're going to have too much attack speed, and you're going to have to somehow remove attack speed from your build. So I recommend just going up to a 6 attacks per second. Then cast resist is always good, and then you can start getting some mana on your gear if you want to get ahead and ready for the mana conversion. That's going to happen after 2500 mana, which should be somewhere around level 75 and up. So at this point, you should hopefully have Cyclopean Coil and hopefully Astromindus as well. These don't have to be roll rolled or have catalysts. Don't worry about any of that. You can try to fit Death Rush in at this point if your gear is good enough to keep your resistance as cap, but don't force it. And you can look for a cheap anoint on your amulet. This is when you can convert to cast on crit for sure. You've probably got enough stats and whatnot, at least if you have these two items, to go ahead and switch over to cast on crit. And so here's our stat priority on the various rares you're going to be filling out your gear with. Once again, cap your resists. Again, we're going to be capping our accuracy reading. You're going to need a good few hundred on your gear. This is very important. Get your move speed. Here, mana becomes much higher priority. Don't worry about life on your gear. Mana is more important. With all that strength we have and percent life on the tree, our life is basically always going to outscale our mana at this point in the game. So we want more mana. It counts for just as much tank up until it exceeds the mom total that we're going to need. And because we have 40% mom right away, we need like 4k mana before it starts becoming less valuable than life for tank. So mana is very high priority here. This is when you should start looking for CDR on a belt or boots. Your belt is going to be Cyclopean. If you're running it, you could choose not to, but I recommend Cyclopean. So this is going to be boots. You're looking for 14%. Attack speed. 6%, 6 APS if you haven't gotten that CDR, this cooldown recovery rate, but up to 7.5 if you have gotten your 14% CDR. Strength and intelligence, whichever is lower, because remember, or just Providence right here. Oh, you can just barely not read it above uh, this window here. Let me move it down. Or just Providence. Increase crit chance per point of strength, whichever is lower. So if you have 600 strength, 700 int, Get strength on your gear, because that's going to help you more. Then cast resistance is good, and then you can start looking at some armor bases for your gear if you want to start being picky and choosy. So, after you got that going, this is when the main build is functional. This is when you're, you know, you're playing the mana stacking build that I'm doing this guide for. Then, once you start getting 90 plus, you're going to want to make sure you get well rolled and catalyst your Cyclopean Coil and Astro Menace for all those extra stats. You're going to start wanting to looking for jewels. This is when you're going to start putting jewels on your tree. You're going to want percent mana, first and foremost. Then you're going to want accuracy and attack speed, whichever ones you need to breach those breakpoints I talked about earlier. Some percent life's always good, and then crit multi gets you a big damage boost. Some things to look for as you scale. Get that 7.5 APS with your CDR. You could then look to get awakened cast on crit for that extra CDR and a bit more on top of that to reach 52% on your cast on crit. Once you reach this, you can go to 8.66 attacks per second. This number comes from the CDR on the Mjolnir. This is from 14% CDR on the Mjolnir. I'll admit, I realize if you're reaching this, it's probably going to be more like 25 or so on the Mjolnirs, so this may be closer to 9. But this is the amount of attack speed you're going to be looking for once you have Awakened Cast on Crit and you've reached this 52% CR breakpoint. Hopefully at this point you're familiar with the build. You can do your own discerning on how this is going to work out. It's going to be somewhere around this. Uh, you're going to want to look for some bit more accuracy than even 3000 to help with evasive monsters and just consistency. You're going to want to move speed on boots and flasks at higher values. Get Start scaling your chaos res. This is going to help your tank a lot. There's a lot of chaos damage in the game right now. Bit, vitality, and clarity, and whichever one was missing before, mentioned, remember how I mentioned not running vitality? At this point, you could look at bidding it if you feel that that's the way to go. Get a bunch of crit multi on your gear. Cluster jewels. So, I'm not looking at cluster jewels at all in this guide, but it is definitely something that is powerful for this build. There are the cluster jewels for power charge generation, endurance charge generation, mana, and also the lightning to cold as extra. It's very, very powerful for this build because Inquisitor does not care what damage type it is and this can give you chill and freeze making clear and just you're so much safer. Basically start looking for high mana on everything 
Life on gear good if you, is good as well if you have the prefix room. And then start doing Timeless Jewel things. Assuming GGG leaves Timeless Jewel alone, this is going to be very, very powerful. So you're going to want to look at that as you progress your character. Alright everyone, that pretty much does it for this build guide. Uh, if you guys have enjoyed it, throw that subscribe, throw that like out there on this video. I'd really appreciate it. If you have any questions still, be sure to throw some comments down there. I will be paying attention to them and I will be answering them up until at least the first few weeks of the league. I'll be answering very quickly. Um, at that point, I'll probably have a lot more videos out, but I do intend to keep up with comments, assuming I don't absolutely blow up beyond uh, estimation. Um, also, if you want to have questions immediately answered or just want to have a conversation with me, I will be streaming at twitch.tv slash alexandrakaringin, as I mentioned earlier. The link to that will be in the description. I'll be streaming on the first weekend quite a lot, um, but during the weekdays, I will not be able to stream quite as much because I do work. But uh, if you want to come hang out and watch me play this build, um, I will be playing it for at least the first few week, first week of the build, uh, the league, sorry, um, and possibly more than that if I really enjoy it. So yeah, come check that out, and I hope you guys enjoyed the build guide, and I will see you later.